Hey, what's going on, people? Let's talk about money. Let's talk about money. Money, 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 money. Money. And one of the reasons that you don't have the money that you want is because you believe for you to get money, someone must lose money. Very, very powerful concept when you think about it. Because I look at when the money's really flowing. I look at my behavior, which is a behavior of putting stuff out and creating. And, you know, just to give you an economic lesson, how does a country generate wealth? Making stuff, not buying stuff, not trading stuff that's already made, but creating new stuff. And when I say trading stuff that's already made, let's say there was only... 8 million cars, right? And the factories were closed and the zombie apocalypse and we were on our way back to rebuilding, but we hadn't got to the point where the factories were built. So it was just trading these cars. Now that can make money because cars are a scarce commodity. It can make money, but it's not adding to the overall GDP of the economy because nothing's being made. Now, on the whole thing about making money, if you don't have the money that you want in your life, I want you to look at your service. How much are you putting out? How many folks are you serving? Going back to way back, way, way, way back to my storage auction days, because that's like it's half a decade ago now. I mean, it's, it's starting to mount up. We're, we're getting to a very critical point because I've been out the business half as long as I was in it. So, you know, the, the tables were shifting. And I really looked at when we started to really, really make money in the storage auction book, in the storage auction business. It's in the book, but it's not a bam, dot, dot. It was all about service. As we increased our service, increased our sales, increased the number of distribution channels, increased, we increased the money. There are many people out there who, by virtue of fear, straight up fear, who are trying to not put that much out, yet they want to get a lot in. And it, it is real common with people in resale. Because once you get that first hit, and when I say hit, it's like a toke of a drug. You buy something for a dollar. You, you buy something for two dollars maybe even 50 and you turn around and you flip it for a thousand or two thousand or three thousand once you get that hit it's like a drug and many people don't realize that they're chasing that hit over and over and over again looking for market inefficiencies is one thing in building your business because the market's very very inefficient but chasing that high chasing that that thing because that's what makes someone who's pretty well off in other parts of their life get in a thrift business because it's a modern day treasure hunt storage auctions treasure hunt uh, picking treasure hunt finding stuff on Craigslist treasure hunt finding something at a really low price that you know has value that is a wonderful way to make a living but it has limitations because for you to continue to make money you must find people who are in a state of information asymmetry, which means you have more information than they do. That's going, that, that window's getting smaller and smaller. There'll always be people who don't give a shit. They'll know the table's worth 1500 and they'll sell it for 50 or or $100 at a garage sale. There'll always be these people. But their numbers are going to drastically shrink over the next few generations because... I want you to understand how this country got started, and it wasn't that long ago. If you talk to your great-grandmother, you ever notice that she saved everything? She grew up in a period of extreme lack. They were rationing out milk, metal. They were rationing out metal, you know, between the Great Depression and the first, uh, you know, World War II. She grew up in a period of extreme lack. This whole thing, this is why houses were a certain size. People didn't have these huge wardrobes you have some poor people with wardrobes 
that number in four, five, six, seven, eight hundred articles of clothing. These are poor people over there. Back then, even the well-to-do people back in the day didn't have that type of largest. Didn't happen. So we went from a period of extreme lack to a period of extreme abundance. Well, guess what? We're arcing down now. <laughs> We're arcing down now. And a lot of people think because they grew up in a period of extreme abundance that it should stay that way and it's not i mean it's really really not uh, the american lifestyle has in my opinion reached a uh, crescendo it's like bam this is where we're going this is it this is this is about as good as it's gonna get unless you increase your service to your fellow man create your own economy and then your standard of limit has your standard of living has no no ceiling it has no there's no ceiling because essentially when you create your own economy, when you start servicing other people and you st your your money tree is a different money tree than that money tree of someone who goes out and works a job and does works a prescribed set of hours who it, it's a totally different ball game. So understand, resale's awesome and everything, but we're running into a problem because Many people, and I've said this before, over half the people in this country are poor. And, you know, it's like, what, what are you talking about? I want you to do the math. Think in your mind. Think in your mind. Don't, don't even just believe this. I'm going to prove it to you. Think in your mind. I want you to go eventually through your mind and name 100 people that you know of in your town, city, whatever. 100. And I want you to think... Of those hundred people, how many that you know, if they had to pony up two thousand dollars cash for an emergency, who could do it? Out of the one hundred, there'll be people who can, but most could not pull up two thousand cash out of anywhere. You don't have two thousand dollars cash. You have what's called negative net worth, which means your liabilities and obligations are more substantial than your cash on hand, which makes you poor. See, you're going on, hey, Johnny has this great job. Uh, Joe has this great job. Jill does this. Johnny has this nice house. All that is a facade. If you don't own that house outright, and the only obligation you have is you know, insurance and property taxes, it's a liability. It cannot exist on the bank's balance sheet as an asset and on your balance sheet as an asset. And you have a mortgage on it. It can't. That doesn't work. So when you start thinking of terms of liabilities, assets versus high income jobs, okay jobs. When you really start looking at it, and here, here's a better question. Take those same 100 people, take those same 100 people, and how many of them could not go to work for three months without really bad shit happening? Bad shit including foreclosure, um, repossession of vehicles, no food on the table. That, that's all bad stuff. How many of those hundred people could do it? Because the thing is, you don't have to be rich to pull off a three-month not working deal if you have your financial education together and you understand business. You don't have to be rich to do that. You just have to have one limited outgo, uh, cash reserves, and income coming in that's not dependent on you going to a job and trading your time for money. You can make three, four G's a month in that situation and have the life of someone who is making three times as much money, but because you don't have those obligations, because you don't have the pressure of being in a job, you're living a much better life, a much healthier life, a much more mentally sane life than those people, and you're making one third of the money because, oh, wait a minute. Are you really making one third of the money? Because they've got that more, they got all this stuff you don't have. You may actually net out more money that you could do what you want, disposable income, than they can because of those obligations. So if you are not really making the money that you want to, you got to examine your thought process on money. Because I got this video up about uh, mental money, how much money is in your mental bank. And I was listening to some stuff this morning and it, it was really good stuff, good stuff, because I've always looked at 
money from a spiritual standpoint. And when I say spiritual, I'm not talking about God. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, religion. I am talking about the spirit of money. When you look at the spirit, you know, and this is some, if you've ever managed your money well, you've seen this. When you have money, it's easier to get more money. When you are broke, it is hard to get money <clears throat> and it's hard to keep money. You start a savings account with a dollar. This is a challenge today. Take a dollar, put it in the savings account, and every week you're going to put another dollar in. The next week you're going to put, you know, start with two dollars. And you just keep doing that. And you'll be amazed at how it starts to attract money in your life because you're learning how to hold on to money because your spirit of money is, it's not some, uh, I got to get rid of it. But when I talk about the spirit of money, Going back to the original concept, for you to get money doesn't mean that someone else has to lose money. If you've always looked, you know, if you really, really look into movies, who's always the bad guy? Who's always the bad guy? This guy with the money. He wants to take world domination, is, you know, doing all of these things, got these super ninja signs, always the rich guy, just hell bent on world domination. Now, compare and contrast the guy in the movie to the people in the world who are billionaires. The Bill Gates, the Zuckerbergs, <clears throat> Steve Jobs. I can't say this guy's name in Nigeria. They have one thing that is in common. They all have created businesses that serve a lot of people. You cannot make a lot of money ethically I will say ethically, because you can make a lot of money from a criminal standpoint, like what happened with the uh, meltdown of the economy. But ethically, you cannot get rich and not help out a lot of people. You can't do it. There's no way you can ethically get rich and not help out a lot of people. There is no way it is possible. No way. You look at stuff that's deemed silly, like an app. Say you have this app, right? You put it in Android. You put it on iTunes. It's 99 cents. Two million people download it. I think, what do you get? Like 70%? I don't know what the breakdown is. I don't do apps. But say, you know, two million people that, and you get 50%. Keep it clean. If it's wrong, you know, it's wrong. You just made a million dollars on a very low price point item. Why? Because the spread was ridiculous. You cannot become financially solvent ethically without helping a lot of people there's no way you can do it it is totally impossible and many people don't really pick up on that they're like well you know uh, <sighs> you know Glendon I don't know about that it's one of the things that I've noticed with uh, some people there's two groups of people that's like hey you know give us your information help me make money now, this is something that I've studied and I've, I've really looked at. You know, you can disagree with me if you want to, but I've studied. The number of people who come on YouTube, and there's the, the information here is sick. You can become a millionaire based on the information here on YouTube. It's, it's just here. It's just you got to go. You just got to come and get it. How many people take that information, make their million, and then turn around and give all that information away for free. Not that many. There's some that do. There's some that do, but most don't. Because, once again, they think for them to have money, that means someone else has to lose money. It is really, really interesting concept. Because I've given away stuff for free. I've done, uh, I've actually, you know, here's a, here's a, great, here's a great example of that concept. When I did the first 30 days to 2500 bucks, it was free. Only thing is you had to be there between 3 or 4, 4 and 5. I don't remember right now. And it, it went over very well, and it's a course that helps people make money. And it's very different because it's not talking about how to scam somebody, how to get over on someone. The genesis of the course is about creation. Because this is the thing. It's about creation and upping your activity. I get these people, 
hey, will twenty, will thirty days, twenty five hundred bucks help me do X, Y, and Z? And I go, yes, because one of the things is this course is very different and it's structured differently because typically if you have a business or you're trying to hustle and you're not making as much money, you have two problems. Your service level is poor and your activity level is poor. And 30 days to 2,500 bucks teaches you how to up that. Uh, right now, my activity level is kind of bananas right now. All the stuff I'm putting out and people are going, yo, slow down, man slow down and the thing is you don't understand when I had the store structure business and it was like 4,000 square feet everything was a dollar I learned a lot from that section I watched people I would sit at my desk and I would watch people and I would watch what happened because uh, I'm not even close to where I'm going to be by the end of, by the end of the year with this product creation because I'm in a product creation mode which is I'm increasing my service. I have products that you're not going to buy and she's not going to buy. But this person will and this person will because what I'm doing is, and I'll tell you, I am uh, totally changing up my business model, which was more of a high-end model. And once again, this comes from information because who am I going to serve? Am I going to serve a group of people who are making, like I said, you know, 300000 to a million a year? I can't. So that's one segment, but I know in that segment, there's only going to be so many people. And then there's this other broad spectrum of folks who are about to get fucked. Uh, that is the, i.e. the working man. Because jobs as we know it are over. They're over. Five years, 50% of you are going to be doing what I'm doing. You're going to be a freelancer, self-employed, something. So 30 days of 2,500 bucks is a course to teach people how to prepare for that and learn how to make money outside the parameters of a job. So what I'm doing is preparing what I believe, I'm preparing for what I believe to be coming. That many people are not going to want to hustle, they're gonna be forced to hustle. It's not gonna be by choice, it's gonna be by force. And I'm gonna have a whole cafeteria of stuff to help you think better, learn how to make money, uh, save money, you see, the thing is, when I say save money, it's not about just saving money for your retirement. It goes back to if you learn how to save money and you can have like thousands of dollars in your checking account and it doesn't have to go out and pay a bill, it is so easy for more money to join those thousands of dollars. But when your bank account's on zero, even if you won $2,000 on the quick pick, it's gone because... You haven't managed your money philosophy and you don't believe money is spiritual. So, essentially, when you learn how to save money, i.e., hold on to money for a specific person, per, you know, for a specific per, uh, purpose, I call it saving for a sunny day. Never say I'm saving for a rainy day. You're programming your mind to for that money to disappear when some jacked up stuff happens. Always say I'm saving for a sunny day. I'm saving for prosperity. I'm saving to for a hustle. I'm saving to make money. Reframe your knowledge. Reframe what you tell yourself. Because you talk to yourself all the time. And 80% of what you say to yourself is negative. There's like 55,000 in thoughts that go through your mind every day. Most of it is on the subconscious, subconscious level. So that's why you have... And I, this is the thing. This is the cool thing. If you can reduce at 80% negative self-talk and meditation will really reduce it but if you can reduce it by 5 or 10% that 5 or 10% reduction in the negative self-talk could yield billions of dollars for you I mean if you change it by 2% like you know everyone else is doing 80% you're doing 78% now, if you really, 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 really want to make your game crisp, shiny, and snap, you start meditating and you start injecting positive self-talk in your subconscious and your negative self-talk is 50% or 30%. You've changed your whole game. You've changed your, you've, you've changed your DNA. You've changed your family tree when you get to that level. So... 
understand that for you to get money, you have to believe money is spiritual. Because when money is spiritual, and uh, check this out, there is this thou shalt prosper, someone that put it in one of the comments on one of my videos. It's a really, really great series about this Rabbi Levin who talks about why Jews are more successful. And I've said this on this channel several times. I have looked at Jewish people as a model. And many people are like, oh, you know, Jews are about money. Jews are just trying to enslave you, blah, 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 blah. I look at the fact that, you know, he said that there was some, you know, I've never seen a poor Jew. I know they exist, but I have not yet to meet one. In my neighborhood, there's Hasidic Jews. There's a bunch of them. And the section that they live in, shit starts at 700,000. They may walk everywhere, but the shit starts at 700. Maybe they were here a long time before that shit got to that. But there was this one concept that when you look at money as like fire, you know, say someone has, you know, just in your mind, see that money is a candle. Money is the fire on the candle. So when someone wants some of your fire, what do they do? They take their candle. You still have your money, your fire, and now that they have fire. When you look at money like that, it's like, oh, which means you can give and get, and you can still you can give and still have. That's a very powerful concept because the big difference between what I do now, and you know, many people are like, you know, oh, Glendon's got another resell. He can't hang, he doesn't want to. Resale is a one-trick pony. You buy some, you sell some. You buy some, you sell some. Creation is a tree that bears harvest season after season after season after season. Essentially, I wrote a book, How to Make Money A to Z, with self-storage unit auctions, and I lived off that income for two years. One book that was created in one time frame that yielded Fruit season, you know, months, months after month after month. And also, coming from a resale perspective, and I was in resale before the storage auction business with the furniture, because I would buy it and I'd sell it and buy it and sell it. It totally changed what I did. And I, and I struggled because I wanted to get back in because, you know, resale is fun. You buy stuff, you get good deals, the so shit's fun. But I really looked at the future. And I really started looking at, okay, I wrote this book, and it's just making this money, and I only did it one time. Huh. And I also am not stupid enough to know that that's going to happen with every book. It's not. Um, that was really atypical. But I can write a book in a certain period of time, and 100 people buy it, and say the book's $5. It's $500 for doing something once. That's how I look at it. I don't look at hours, I look at value. And, you know, I've worked on my process of being able to, you know, and that's one of the reasons that I'm pushing right now, because I'm pushing myself to get better and faster and more efficient. Because, say, I write, you know, five books in a month. Say I write five books in a month, sell them to 100 people, five bucks. It's 2,500 bucks. And then it peaks up because I do a launch. Then over time, it drops off. But wait a minute, and you know, I put this in another video, and everyone wants to check the math and completely miss the process, which is why your broke ass is broke. I do this year after year, and I get to a point where I've got 100 books, 100 products. And then, like I said, I saw this last week. People are going to come in and it's like, no, nah, I don't want that, but I want this, this, and this. No, nah, I don't want that. And all of a sudden, it's just people are making multiple purchases. They're making multiple purchases. And that's came from having that dollar section, which everyone thought was crazy. I even told some people, oh, man, you're just wasting money. You're giving away money. You're stupid. I was serving a lot of people. And the lessons learned from running that section and sitting at my desk and watching human behavior and watching how people, it's like, oh, I used to play games. I used to take polos that we couldn't put on eBay. They had a stain or something on it, you know, name brand stuff. And I would take that stuff and I would like bury it in the piles. And they would like put shirts here, put shirts here. Now, you know, critic sheets like, watch this. I tell my partner, it's like, this is here, this is here, this is here, right? And we sit there, they find that shit. They would dig for it. They would dig for it because word got out. Psst, sometimes he has really good stuff in the dollar section. And we just sit there and crack up. They would find every polo, every eyesod, every juicy couture. They would, they would find all of that stuff. 
but they didn't know that we had already ran it through the process and because it had a hole in it, it had a stain in it, you could put it on eBay. I don't care what you put in the eBay listing that, hey, this has a hole or has a stain, they're still going to go, I am is nice or described. And right there is like, bam, there's a hole in it. And they're going to, they didn't read. You know, people, don't make your eBay descriptions long if you're going to do it. Make them short and sweet because they're not going to read that shit. And I learned from that stuff. And by being a creator and see, once again, fire, you know, spreading fire, you can become very, very well off with your time and your money. I want you to really, really think about that. I want you to really, really think about that because uh, I look at, you know, how my mom ended up. She didn't die with a lot of money. She actually died very impoverished, really. And she worked extremely hard the majority of her life. I look at that and I'm like, that's not the way. And there are many of her parents who are doing the same thing and part of tribalism, which is some of the things I talk about, you've like almost destined to follow the same footsteps because you feel that it is betrayal for you to go on another direction than to follow that same self-fulfilling family DNA prophecy. I see it all the time. I see, you know, that whole thing is like, you can become your parents if you're not careful and you don't assiduously avoid that shit. And that's one of the reasons that I went out in the world and got a financial education. Because the most, and when I say financial education, I'm not talking about stocks, bonds, investments. I know some really well-off people. And I know very few who've become rich from investing. Very few. Because I saw that in another um, thing I was watching, and it's very true. I know a handful of people that have become rich from strictly investing. And I want you to think about this. What, is, what were we talking about here? Money is spiritual. Fire. Candle, right? Investing. You put money into a capital market. A group of companies is able to pull cash out of the capital market to make capital improvements, whatever they want to do. But when you create something... Look at Spanx, the lady that created a better girdle. That's what I call it. She became a billionaire. Look at uh, Damon John, Sun John on Shark Tank. Created a clothing line. Became a multimillionaire early in life. Create is spiritual. I, mean, I want you to really think about that. Creating is spiritual. Because when you create something, because for a dude, that's the only way you can get birth is to create some shit. That's the closest you're going to get to birth is to create some shit. And... You, you talk to a guy that's created a business. He's been with that business. and business 20, 30 years old. And see how close he acts like that business is his kid. It's, you know, it, it's amazing when you see this thing. When you really, really think about it. But thinking of money as spiritual. Thinking of money as something that you can have a drop here. And it will grow from service. Totally changes how you make money. Because one of the reasons. And I, I'll talk about this in 30 days to 2500 bucks. Many people um, essentially keep their service low because they think for them to get money, someone else must lose money. When you reframe your mindset on that, when you look at it from the standpoint of the more that I do, the more that I put out, the more that I will make. And also, money, wealth is time. That's the, that's the, number, one, that's the number one element of wealth, time. You get time, you become wealthy. Number two is emotional happiness. That's number one is time. Number two is happiness. Those are forms of wealth. Number three is actually money. Because if you got time and you're happy, then you get money. Actually, I'm sorry. Number three is, is your health. Number three should be your health. That's a form of wealth. Health is a form of wealth. Okay. So you got time, happiness, uh, health, and then the physical aspect of money. That's what you should be aiming for. Because if you're just trying to get money, to get money at the exclusion of happiness, at the exclusion of time, you could be a very financially rich person and bankrupt in terms of happiness, in terms of physical health, in terms of mental health, and just shit be ass out. So, you know, you really got to look at that stuff. But seriously, if you don't have the money that you want in your life, you've got to increase your service. You've got to put out more. You have to do more. You have to know more people. You have to climb out of that 
cocoon that you're in of I'm just going to keep it safe. That's something else. Uh, playing it safe. That is another way to keep your ass broke. That is another way for the big penis in the sky to come get your ass. Playing it safe because, you know, I put up stuff. It, you know, I'm just letting you know, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out in the G-verse. There's, there's a ton of stuff coming out in the G-verse between now and December. Because I have a plan. And I'm putting it out there. And I don't walk on faith. I walk in faith, you know. Walking on something, you can jump off that shit. When you're walking in the mist, when you're walking in smoke, you're walking in fog, it's all around you. There ain't no getting out of it. You just got to roll with it. And I'm not like a, a Christian or an overly real or a religious person, but I've noticed many really so-called Christians or religious people will never walk in faith. They'll walk on it. They won't trust it. It's real funny. Yet you you believe, but you really don't believe. It's like a sure. It's like a facade in some regards, because if you're walking in freaking faith, and you've got this ideal, and you want to write a book or start a business, you're gonna do that stuff. But if you're like, time ain't now. Lord don't want me to have it now, and like the, the common thing with uh, because you see this whole thing that goes around like this Mimi. Boaz, broke ass, po ass, all of this stuff. And I crack up because I'm going to say something that's very, very uh, offensive. The reason that most women who want to be married aren't married is because they aren't fit to be married. They have not done the work on themselves to become a wife. Bam, that's it. You do the work on yourself to become a wife. Bo ass, who ass, show ass, whatever. Well, show the fuck up because your energy will draw it. But as long as you're like, I want to be me, yet I want to cleave with someone. It's called incongruency. It's called incongruency. That's what it is. And I crack up because I have two friends, and I'm going on a tangent, but I will come back, who listen to me on that, and they're both married. Didn't play any games. Didn't do any things. They changed how they thought, and they got married. Both of them, I think. One that took two and a half years, the other one was like four. Both of them got exactly what they wanted because they changed how they thought about it. If you don't have that relationship you want and all this other stuff, it's how you think. But back to the money. Back to the money, 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 money. Are you going to get money? If you want to get money, put out service. Really, really think about that. Put out service. If you really, really want to increase your game, set yourself on fire financially. And I'm not talking about in a bad way. I'm talking about where the blazing, the money is just growing. Increase your service and start thinking of money as a spiritual pursuit. Start thinking of money is not a bad thing. And I've talked about this many times. You can't have what you hate. If you think, oh, rich people are bad, you will never be rich. Now, what's your ideal of rich? Having time to do what you want to do, freedom of choice, freedom of location, freedom, all that stuff, right? And you're going, oh, those rich people. When Mitt Romney did what he did, I didn't get mad at Mitt. I lifted up Mitt's shirt and was like, hey, checking the technique. How can I do this? And you know what's funny? What's really, really funny about what Mitt Romney did with his uh, tax shelters and stuff? You can do the same thing. There is no law that's saying only Mitt Romney's of the world can do it. I'll give you a real quick one. You can go to Ireland. You actually, it's, they got the shit stuff. You can go in and incorporate it in Ireland. Corporate tax rate in Ireland is twelve point five percent. You can do that shit on the freaking internet and legally. See, then it becomes this issue of morality. Is it is it a moral to not pay taxes and live in the United States? Well, where's your money coming from? I'm not mad at Google or Amazon or any of these big corporations that have used the rule of law to legally not pay a shitload of taxes. Because personally, I think the tax rate is onerous myself. I'm like, why would you give money you don't have to give to the government? Why would you do that? I'm sorry. I'm not mad at them. Part of that is a lack of information. Because you feel... Due to your lack of a financial education, that you have to do that shit. Do you realize that if you are a contractor, 
and you make 100 grand a year and you're in the United States, if you go ahead and f do your Ireland, your Netherlands thing, do the Dutch sandwich, still contractor, go ahead, do some jobs over there that you could literally save yourself 30 G's a year? Why wouldn't you do that? It's legal. Did you beat some baby seal over the head? Did you rob some trick-or-treaters or that candy? No. You just say, oh, this is how the law works and I can use it. <laughs> I mean, people crack me up. It's like, well, you know, it's a patriarch duty. No, oh, no, you got to understand, this game is dirty. And if you don't play, what, what's my saying? Don't hate the game. Don't hate the player. Learn the fucking rules so you can win. And those are the rules. That you can go to Ireland, start a corporation, run your money through this stuff, and pay Ireland 12.5% tax. Or go to Bermuda. I don't know what the tax rate in Bermuda. But it, all these things are much lower. Now, I want you to think about this. Why do these things exist? There's an environment for them. Nothing exists without an environment. Nothing exists without an environment. As long as the environment is there, these things will exist. And part of it is that many of you don't understand how the system really works. So you're voting for people who really don't have your best interests at heart. Because, you know, this is where I'm at. I still vote, but I grumble about it because I'm always in the booth. What's the lesser of two evils? Not that I'm in like, yes! It's usually, what's the lesser of two evils? And really, with the Electoral College, sometimes that shit doesn't really matter. I mean, that's when I, this is, and it's just me. I personally don't believe in Democrat. I personally don't believe in Republican. I think they're all friends, and I think the thing is rigged against the average person. Because if you study this, how many Congress people went to Congress who weren't millionaires? I want you to look at this. Do your own research. Don't listen to me. Look at the number of people who went to Congress who became wealthy while they were in Congress and when they got out. And they were not wealthy before they went. That should tell you something. Al Gore, which I give props to, ran for president. Didn't work out. Al said, you know what? I can't be president, but I can be worth $100 million. And he went and did his thing. You notice Al don't really talk, you don't see him talking about shit politically wise. You really, he's, you see him at the game? Mm mm. Making money. Uh, Sarah Palin, she learned the game. Sarah was making like 60 G's a year. She learned that she could play this game. I think Sarah's net worth went up to like 20 million from 60,000 to 20, in like the last, you know, eight, nine years. There's money in that game. A lot of people don't understand that. It's a lot of money in that game. A lot. All right, so hopefully you got some stuff. You um, are going to reframe your mind, reframe your thinking and thinking that money is spiritual. Money, money is spiritual. Once you get to that point, a lot of things in your life are going to change um, in ways that you can't even imagine. So just to check out Thou Shall Prosper. Check that out. Just Google it and you'll see the book. Get the book. Watch the YouTube videos. It's pretty cool stuff. And if you like the video, you want to change how you think. You want to reframe your mindset. Bam. There's going to be some stuff here. There's going to be some stuff here. There's going to be one, your free freaking audio book. I'm giving you some for free. You just got to listen to it. It will help you. Two, Hustler University. Join that shit. Three, Hustler's Camp. The Hustler Mindset Project, Strengthening Your Mind, 30 Days to 2500. There it is. And I've got some specials there. So just check it out. And, you know, take this holiday weekend that's coming up as an opportunity to get ahead versus kicking back. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side.